Hello there, I'm Max Eberle and I'm back with another instructional pool video to help the pool player get better at their game in as short a time as possible. So today our video is about the draw shot and how to develop speed control and direction control so you can land your cue ball exactly where you want with more and more frequency in your pool game. And I'll be actually demonstrating an exercise that I've used for many years to help me develop the speed control that I have on my draw shots. And I want to show it to you today. Okay, so before we get started, please subscribe to my channel by hitting that subscribe button and hit that little bell, which is the notification button, so you know when I upload a new lesson for you to help you with your pool game. And if you want to check out my instructional materials, I'm leaving the links in the description below so you can check out Pro Pool Academy and um, my DVDs and books. I have all those links down there, and I'll talk more about those at the end of the video. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, my friend, so we're going to get started here with a draw shot practice video. And what I'm trying to do is draw back to the target that you can see right there, which will be perfect position on the nine. And I'm showing you every attempt here. This is my very first attempt. And it's going back pretty good direction, a little too far. Okay, number two. Pretty good direction, but came back way too far this time. That's eh, okay. I got a shot in the side, but <laughs> no, really, you try. You want to get good shape on on that shot. So looks like there's a funny roll right by the target there. Uh, it was coming back on a good line. That one's pretty good. Um, not too far into the practice. And this is a great way to build your draw shot speed control. You want to have that ability to land on a dime, as they say, when you're doing your draw shots. So this is how you do it. I mean, you got to get into the pool hall and hit a bucket of balls or many buckets of balls. So I think I ended up doing this for uh, for quite a while. So this isn't a short video, but I wanted to show you uh, the nuts and bolts of improving your draw shot. It's one thing to just talk about doing drills, and it's another thing to show you what I'm talking about um, as by example. Um, and you'll see the sunlight changing location there on the table coming in. This is filmed at the Q Club a few weeks ago, the Q, Las Vegas Q Club. All right, that one's a little wide and a little bit long. So you always want to check, track those two metrics when you're hitting the shot, the, the line of position. So you see that's coming almost right towards the ball, and then it rolls off. Um, the target's on a little funny spot. There's a little dip, it seems like, in the table right there that throws the cue ball offline right in there. Um, so those two metrics are direction, which would be the line that the cue ball uh, is is heading on towards towards the spot like that so that's pretty good direction there and a little bit too far so distance so it's direction and speed or distance so that one's off on the direction pretty good speed though notice almost perfect speed but it was off by uh, like five or ten degrees on the uh, angle or direction that one's really good direction a little bit too far so you track these every time you shoot and that way you can make adjustments so usually if the ball goes to the right of that spot like in this case see how it's going to the right um, that could mean that I hit the ball to the left of uh, left side of the pocket which would open up the angle so you can hit the ball exactly the same and still make it with the same speed and spin, spin and everything, but if you hit it in a slightly different spot in the pocket, that means you're coming off at a slightly different angle, so that's going to affect where the cue ball lands. So that one, that one was good speed, um, but a little bit off on the direction. So these, what the, these uh, help you dial in what you're trying to do, and that one's good direction and good speed and it came close and it looked like it rolled off again that happened a few times to me where I got real close to the spot and then the ball rolled off but okay so that one you can see the direction is pretty good but the speed was a little short 
And, you know, I'll tell you what, it's hard to get lucky and play perfect shape to land on a target that size. Uh, so what this does is it forces you to concentrate and to really pay attention to the feel of your stroke. There we go, that's a that's perfect direction, a little bit, a little bit too hard. Um, so it forces you every single shot to concentrate and to figure out, you know, how you're stroking the ball and to really try to improve every single shot, um, which is really, really important. You know, if you don't do this, then you're going to be beat by somebody who does do this and who, who masters the cue ball control. So I would call this a requirement, something like this, um, to be one of the top players out there. You got to you got to have this ability to control the cue ball. So and this is how you do it. I mean, if you don't do this kind of drill, then what are you what are you going to do? Um, the only alternative to something like this, and and I don't even call it an, an alternative. It's more like an addition to, is that when you practice, you pick a spot for your position every single shot. And so, therefore, every single shot that you take in practice becomes part of the practice drill, and you learn the speed of the table. Okay, so that one, I can, it looks like I hit the ball a little too full, still made it. Speed was pretty good. Direction was off a little bit. Um, so what you do is you do drills like this, and you also go for the target when you're when you're practicing and when you're playing in your matches. Um, but you don't want to take it to the point of sharking yourself if you don't land on your spot exactly. You're just, there we go, that's a pretty good one. I don't know why that, that ball's rolling off when it gets near to the spot. Excuse me, I'm drinking a nice uh, organic coffee here. Nothing like a good coffee. It's a, it's a great pick-me-up for playing pool too when you're when you're practicing nice coffee uh, some people it gives them the jitters for me I like it. it it just it's a good it's a good thing okay so that one was a little off on direction pretty good on speed so you can see if you get close like in you get real close you're, you're still going to be almost perfect on the ball but it's nice when you do end up perfect on that target now that one's real far so that that only happens once in a while it's going to happen every now and then it, it, it's hard to to be in that perfect zone but even then when that happens you, you're still going to have like a bank or a cut on your next shot usually um, sometimes it could be disastrous if you're if you're trying to do something uh, real real specific like play a, a save or exact tight position that has to be on that on that target that you're trying to land on uh, but if you're going just for a big area here if I'd put like a sheet of paper out there and I tried to land on it It's just not going to produce the results that I want as far as having an accurate position playability. Okay, so that one, look, the line's good, good, good. Almost perfect speed. Uh, and this can take a while because you can land close. You can land real close to your target um, a lot of times without quite landing exactly on it. And this is pretty far, the, the position here. Uh, looks like I'm about three feet from the object ball and maybe four feet from the object ball to the target so it's a little bit further than it looks like okay that's a good one see we're not even halfway through this drill You can see the sunlight is still moving. All right, so that's what you want to do, though. Just roll up your sleeves and get to practice, and you'll you'll be amazed when when you can do this for a while and land on one target. Your ability to land on every single other target that you pick in your game is going to be improved because you're going to be that much more in tune with your stroke. And uh, pay attention to what you do with your body. Do you move your body? Do you uh, move your head forward? And like right there, it looks like I'm, I'm staying pretty still. 
might be a little bit of movement. So that's something that I could work on is, is be even more still. Most people have a lot of movement in their in their head and their body, most amateurs. And uh, that's something that that you could fix if you're trying to learn pool and uh, or if you've been playing for a few years and you have a sticking point. You're probably moving your head forward on every shot. There's a 99% chance that you are, even though I never met you, never saw you, most likely. I could tell you the top five things that you're doing wrong in your game without even meeting you. It's it's very common, the mistakes that people make. Another one would be open opening your bridge. Your bridge hand is not solid enough. So look at my bridge hand when I'm shooting here, um, especially for the draw. I like the closed bridge. But you see how the hand doesn't move. So you gotta you gotta work on your bridge hand to make sure it's solid, and that's that's not easy to do. But with work, it it's not that hard to do either. Ooh, that one was pretty good. All right, so when you're playing, you're not gonna have a target on the table, obviously, but you can pick that spot out with your eyes. And how big you make it, it's up to you. It could be the size of a cue ball, the size of a quarter, the size of a silver dollar. Uh, it could be the size of a softball. Yeah, I was mad. I see, I knew I hit it too hard right when I hit it. I, that nine ball is still cuttable, but you become so in tune with your stroke that you know as soon as you hit it, if you hit it a little too hard, too soft, uh, wide, um, not wide, uh, or you know if you hit it pretty good and it might land on the target. Ooh, that one was looks like it was going right there, but it rolled off at the end. That happened a lot during this drill. Uh, might want to check the table too. Like try rolling a ball right towards your target and make sure your your uh, table is actually rolling level. All right, so another one would be a lot of players, they don't aim while they're standing. So they, they get down on the shot a little bit sloppy, and then they adjust their aim once they're down there. Ooh, that one was pretty good. That might have landed right on the target, but the edge stopped it from coming up. So it's good if you... If you can see your line of aim, your shot that you want to come down on while you're standing on your back foot, I don't really show it in, in these shots here uh, for the sake of time. But I'm actually standing on my, my right foot, standing all the way back with both feet next to each other, and I see the line I want to get down on, and then I step forward, keeping my eyes on the eight ball, and aiming as I come down into the shot so that when I get down, I'm already aimed perfect. I could close my eyes and hit the ball without a practice stroke. And that's what you want to do on all your shots. You want to aim while you're still standing and then maintain that aim as you come down into your stance. And that's, if you never heard that before, then write that down because that's, that's going to transform your game, not overnight, but actually within the next five minutes, you're going to be twice as good of a player as you are now if you implement that and you, and you never heard that. Just aim while you're standing and you're going to be twice the player immediately that you are because your aim is going to be so much better consistently. And that's important. Why not have good aim to where you're making almost everything you look at? Okay, another thing would be changing your stroke, not stroking straight through the ball or on, the, on your stroking line that you choose. So you want to be decisive in your aim by aiming while you're standing. You want to have a tight bridge. It stays solid as you stroke through the ball. Ooh, that was looking pretty good. It rolled off again. I'm, I'm uh, getting annoyed by that. But um, So a solid bridge. You don't want to move your head as you deliver the cue. This is good for visualization purposes. You I put the ball right on there just to show my, my brain, my mind, what, I, what I'm trying to achieve. Get down, practice my stroke. So my brain sees that cue ball right there on the target. 
positive visualization, you could call it. All right, here we go. Okay, it's kind of cool how that light, the sunlight's coming through, pointing right at the target. It's almost like a uh, message from God telling me I'm, I'm in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing. Practice is good. Maybe you've heard practice makes perfect. That's pretty good. I like the one perfect practice makes perfect. You're practicing to be perfect, so you're trying, you're trying to land perfectly on your spot. You're trying to have perfect fundamentals, perfect stroke. Uh, of course, it takes a while to develop, so you know, try your best never to be discouraged. And if you go backwards, or it feels like you're going backwards, don't be discouraged either, because that is normal. It's part of the process of improving. You might actually hit a slump right before you improve your overall level. And uh, if you get discouraged during during that slump, then you might not experience playing better, which might have only been like a few days or a week later. Um, but it's important to work on your fundamentals, work on your game, uh, even if, if, it, if it feels funny and you actually go backwards for a minute. you uh, Trust me, you are going to get better very soon. You just have to be able to withstand mentally those, those slumps and just trust the process that you're doing in your practice and, and trust your coach, uh, which if you don't have one and I'm your coach, that's good. doing my best to steer you the right way uh, but you want to be like a scientist an actual scientist by tracking your results and making uh, adjustments based on your results of where the cue ball is going and uh, how your stroke felt um, you know try different things uh, your grip grip pressure you want to maintain to be very similar at, throughout the stroke you don't want to clench, clench the cue. I try to keep it the same when I come through. Uh, see my stroke going there? My front finger actually loosens up as I come through. And the cue is, is uh, in control mostly in my middle and ring finger. Uh, the, front, the front finger is actually still touching the cue, but it's, it's more relaxed, and it kind of comes off the cue a little bit. And it becomes more, the cue becomes more cradled in my uh, pinky than it was on the backswing. The pinky kind of opens up on the backswing. And then the front finger opens up on the front swing. Um, so it's relatively loose. You're cradling the cue without squeezing it. Um, and that might cause you to want to squeeze, or I mean to uh, make your front hand loose. And that might be one reason why people have a problem with have, keeping a tight bridge because they're using their backhand to swing through and, and they keep it relatively loose so their brain makes them want to do the same thing loosen up their front hand but that's a mistake you want to keep that front hand tight so you have to do two things at once with your hands one one hand stays loose the other one stays tight and and put some weight into your front hand so and that'll help you keep it solid you, you eliminate variables. Pool, a lot, playing good pool is, is a lot of a lot of it is not about what you do; it's about what you don't do. So you don't move your head, you don't move your body as you come through with a cue. You you don't open your bridge, you don't let your bridge get loose as you come through with your cue. Uh, so I mean, you could say keep your body still, or you could say don't don't move your body. Then I'm just trying to uh, land on the spot from there. Uh, looks like I'm done. Now I'm just practicing my speed control. I'm going to try to land on this spot right here. 
it's a fun little game you could do. You could kick the ball in various uh, directions and distances and try to land on a spot. That'll help you with your kicking direction and and uh, also your speed control. There's a lot you can do. Uh, just just keep try, trying to stay specific with where you want the cue ball to land. And then when you're playing in a game, trust it. You know, don't get uh, tightened up and don't don't allow it to shark you by trying to play too perfect and get sharked by that. You wanna you just wanna have, have developed such a great feel and practice that you allow yourself to flow and you just let your skill shine through because you've developed it. Okay, my friend, so thanks for watching. And remember to go out to your pool table and actually try this drill for yourself where you land the cue ball exactly where you want. Uh, it'll be well worth your time. It'll pay off for many decades to come. And go check out my websites, uh, propoolacademy.com, uh, poolmastery.com, where you can get the Powerful Pool DVD set. You can try out disc one for just seven bucks and uh, I'll ship it to you free shipping anywhere in the world at one low price. And you can get my book at zenpoolbook.com. I have a special where you get the actual book and the audio book. And also check out worldpooltour.com if you like this hat and you want to get one for yourself. They're almost sold out right now. I have a lot of different styles, also shirts, coffee mugs, all kinds of stuff. And qmax.com also. And I'd also like to thank my sponsor, my Q sponsor, Meucci Qs. Um, I play with an amazing Q. It has incredible feel and I can do whatever I want with the cue ball. I had one when I was a kid and I loved it and now I've been playing with one for like four or five years now and it's absolutely awesome. I recommend the Pro Shaft, any of the Meucci Qs with the Pro Shaft. Okay, so thanks for watching again. Go out and practice. Uh, remember to hit that subscribe button and go out and practice. So by the time the next video comes around, you're already better in your game. Okay, take care.